What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you'd like to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm not sure if I'm a skilled swordsman, but I'm willing to use this sword to battle until the end of time. Agera gave a gentle smile in response. The sword was everything to him. I see. Please disregard my insignificant comment, though. Hakuro swallowed his thoughts and stepped back. Even though he lacked evidence, Agera must be his grandfather's reincarnation. Furthermore, even if Agera was Bukuya Araki, Kandu wouldn't have changed his mind for that reason. After all, Hakuro's grandfather, whom he had never beaten, was human. Whatever the response, it wouldn't matter in the end if we wanted to change the course of events. The only way to prevail in this battle was to subdue Kandu with force. Perhaps the person Sir Hakuro knows as It was my grandfather. Gazel, who was also whispering, received a response from Hakuro. Esprit joined them as they conversed in whispers. Did your grandfather pass away 300 years ago, Hakuro? That's correct. It's possible if that's the case. He was a demon in that form from birth, and he always carried a sword. Lady Carrera also gathers souls that are proficient in martial arts. If there were such a connection, it wouldn't be shocking. I see. If so, does that imply he is aware of something you are not? It's difficult to say, although I was unable to perfect it. He claimed that the Hakkasen was the best of all the techniques he had shown me. The talk continued after that. After giving it their all, Hakuro and the others had already been defeated. They were therefore prepared to wait and see if they would succeed or fail. Even though he was aware that it was inappropriate at this moment, Hakuro was concerned about Agera's identity. Gazel was also interested in Hakuro's master. Esprit came to attend to them. Her public appeal that she was doing her job was pretty amazing, to the point where Agera would tip his cap to her. Agera sighed heavily at the predicament. A relaxed Kandu observed Agera without interfering with the adversary's conversation. It was Kandu's responsibility to get rid of anyone trying to sabotage Kigali's ritual. He was also weeding out the most powerful people who could be useful, rather than seeking to eliminate all of his opponents. That's why he made the quick decision to answer Agera. He was only serious with Gazel since it would have been risky to leave him alone. There was no assurance that Hakuro would triumph if he had given a technique to a saint who was equal to him. Kandu therefore gave victory, or rather, his work priority. When facing an opponent that was obviously inferior to him, like Agera, he was willing to take some chances. However, Kandu rarely made choices like these. He detested wasting time on minor things because he was a rationalist who was always committed to getting the task done. Kandu's sole weakness was his pride in the swordsmanship school where he had trained. I guess I'm still a little naive since I find it difficult to let go of my personal emotions. He thought about it, but he couldn't help but be a little curious. Kandu was about to respond, fine, I'll play along, but he was smart enough to keep his surroundings in mind. He glanced over and noticed Velgrind moving. It appeared as though something had changed even though Kigali's forbidden birthday ritual was still going on. Sadly, there was no time, so Kandu made the decision to leave as well. Sorry. Although I would have enjoyed keeping you company, the job comes first. He spoke to Agera and put his blade away. He spoke to Agera in a condescending manner. Even yet, Agera was powerless to stop Kandu. He couldn't help but get a chilly sweat as he saw Kandu leave. He mumbled. It appears that I narrowly escaped death. Gadra was engaged in a solitary battle with Velgrind. He was not, however, truly engaged in combat. Even the technologically sophisticated demon Colossus would have been destroyed by such an attempt in a single strike. Gadra was aware of his position and would not have acted so foolishly. He was interrogating Velgrind because he was curious. I had no clue that Sir Veldora was the brother of Her Excellency the Marshal, the Scorched Dragon. Up until now, I had no idea. It's no surprise that you are so gorgeous. The first thing was a compliment. He piqued Velgrind's interest in this way. I recently showed my face, so it's only normal that you weren't familiar with me. That put an end to it. Velgrind remained and spoke with Gadra for some more time. His best method for passing the time was to engage in conversation. Gadra was still alive today because it worked. Velgrind, however, had her own plans. I see. So Lady Velgrind has always been on His Majesty Rudra's side. I'm extremely astonished that you've been able to play the position of Marshal for centuries. Well, you know, I'd periodically go a few centuries without speaking in public. I wouldn't really describe it as being that difficult. Despite her kind reply, Velgrind appeared exhausted. She had had enough of Gadra's endless inquiries. She couldn't help but say something that came off as a complaint because of this. You've got a lot of nerve, though. Because Ridra likes you, I gave you permission to ask questions, but I wasn't expecting you to keep asking so many. 
Thank you for the compliment. It's not a compliment. Velgrind appeared perplexed. Gadra might be easily twisted and crushed by her. She had previously taken out four split bodies and was afraid to release them simply to take out Gadra. She was all right with it and could deal with Gadra as long as he didn't disrupt the ritual. Velgrind was wondering whether she had done something wrong, but Gadra was asking a succession of interesting questions. By the way, why did Sir Damrata prevent me from alerting His Majesty? I was wondering. The Imperial Army would have sustained less harm if Sir Rimuru's forces had been properly disclosed. We don't care about the Imperial Guards, as you've undoubtedly guessed by now. We simply allowed the fight to take place in order to awaken the more powerful ones. But then, don't you think it would have been better if I could have spoken with him about it? How persistent. Although you want to say Damrata betrayed us, the fact is that he has his own reasons. Oh, I see. What are these reasons related to the boy Masayuki? I'm not sure. Why should I care what Damrata is doing? Who exactly is Masayuki? Huh? Gadra couldn't understand Velgrin's response. Masayuki was the key, in his opinion. You are not familiar with the hero Masayuki? Velgrind responded immediately to Gadra's anxious question. I told you that I didn't know him, is he strong or something? Gadra's response when asked if he was strong was simply no. Even though Gadra liked Masayuki and didn't have anything against him, he was aware of the boy's weakness. Gadra responded, and Velgrind chuckled. Only those who are likely to awaken are of interest to Kondu. Furthermore, if he poses as a hero, perhaps Ridra reasoned that the demon lords would deal with him in due time. I see. Gadra thought. Masayuki was used by Yuki to observe demon lord Rimuru's reaction. Undeniably, Damrata's suggestion was the reason for it. In other words, the empire's upper echelons had to be aware of Masayuki. However, Velgrind asserted that she knew nothing about him. He was not a powerful man, so it would be natural if she disregarded him. Yes, it was conceivable that they disregarded him because of his blatant cowardice. At least Kondo would quickly determine that Masayuki was worthless to him. If Masayuki was truly an exact replica of Emperor Rudra, it wouldn't be strange if he tried to get rid of him. He was always ready to eliminate any ambiguity before it became an issue. It makes sense in that regard, but what about Damrata's actions? Hum. However. Sir Damrata had two single digits assigned to defend little Masayuki, as you may know. The country of monsters could be infiltrated, I assume, so how about that? No, yes, I suppose, but… Gadra became frustrated and stumbled. Although it seemed plausible in some ways, there was something strange about it. Gadra was concerned about something that, in his opinion, he should not have to worry about as someone who had betrayed the Empire. Gadra wanted to scream at Velgrind, demanding that she take him seriously. You seem to be quite dissatisfied. Ah, uh, no, no, it's nothing. Gadra struggled desperately to steady his racing heart as he pondered how she could tell his mood when she couldn't even see his face. He then realized why he had been uncomfortable with Velgrin's remarks. Sir Damrata really is a traitor, isn't he? Gadra spoke rashly. Don't be silly. You are the traitor. It was a valid point. Gadra, however, was unfazed. He took advantage of his anxiety to speak out against Velgrin. In any case, allow me to ask you a question. In reality, Masayuki resembles His Majesty Rudra in every way. What are your thoughts about that? That's true, he felt uneasy because of Masayuki's appearance. It was only natural that the Empire would value one's strength, powerful or weak. The more crucial fact about Masayuki, which shouldn't have been kept to oneself, was that he resembled the ruler, Emperor Rudra, almost exactly. Kandu might be aware of this knowledge. Bernie and Jiwu wouldn't have known, though. Rudra's friend Damrata was aware of it. So why did he choose to keep Masayuki safe? That is what he was unable to comprehend, Gadra reasoned. Wait, what did you say? As I've already mentioned, His Majesty Rudra and the hero Masayuki share a facial feature. What makes this information? Gadra stopped talking in the middle of his statement and turned pale. Upon seeing Velgrin's expression, he shuddered and couldn't help but think, Oh, perhaps I'm going to die, regretting that he had become overexcited. However, Velgrin disregarded Gadra and started to think. Kandu was most likely aware of this information. If so, she questioned why he kept it a secret from her. The more troubling concern was Damrata. She couldn't ignore Gadra's statements any longer because she didn't know what he was thinking. More than that. How similar is he to Ridra? I'll have to verify it for myself. Despite the little oversight involving the annihilation of the invading imperial armies, she had assumed everything was proceeding according to plan. But despite its apparent insignificance, Velgrind was extremely irritated by it. Gadra, 
I appreciate you sharing the helpful information. What do you say? I'll let you off the hook for that information. Would you like to test me with that toy of yours? Velgrind never intended to kill Gadra in the first place. Gadra seems to be one of Rudra's few reliable buddies. Although Gadra had indeed betrayed the Empire, Velgrind was of the opinion that he had not betrayed Rudra. The Empire itself held no significance for Velgrind. Gadra's treachery was therefore still acceptable in her eyes. In this regard, Velgrind's cognitive process was unique and not something Gadra could predict. Consequently, he determined that he had no option but to go along with Velgrind's proposal. He chose to debate to buy time because he knew he couldn't win anyhow. The mission would be completed if they engaged in a genuine battle at this moment. Simply put, Gadra would be eliminated in a fraction of a second. Gadra did not pause as a result. <laughs> You've got to be kidding, I think. I'm perfectly aware that I cannot compete with you. He simply shrugged it off since he needed to be shameless in this situation. He pretended to reject the proposal in this response, but he did not actually say yes or no. There was no worry that he would later be charged with deserting Rimuru because he left the choice up to his opponent. It was the ideal strategy for getting by. This was the best example of Gadra's cleverness. Although Velgrind was aware of Gadra's cleverness all she could think of was how amusing he was. She sighed and shrugged it off because it was all too typical of him. Plus, fortunately for Gadra, circumstances had altered. It was necessary to go since the split body that was combating Veldora had gotten more serious. Oh really? When you're ready, please let me know. Then I will handle you. Do your best to survive this war first, though. Eh? I've made the decision to hand this off to another pawn since I have some business to attend to. Do your best to become a saint because the military seems to have hated you. What exactly do you mean by- Gadra tried to question Velgrind, but she just hung in the air. The ritual would be significantly delayed as a result of the interruption to the magic, but it was unavoidable. Gadra, who had been left behind, stared in awe at Velgrind. He wasn't sure what to do because of the sudden change in the circumstances. There was no time to let your mind wander on the battlefield, not even for a second. This was demonstrated by the fact that, even before Gadra could respond, the meaning of Velgrind's words became obvious. Dimensional connection! Hey anime fans, episode 9 of Solo Leveling is now live on anime fan narrations. Check the description box for the link to listen. Don't miss out, subscribe for more epic adventures. That's it for this video guys, thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. Shout out to the new members of Anime Kohai supporters, Jerry Sladek, William Locke, Jordan Mercia, Jay Magsino, Recruel17, Bismarck Munoz, Ryan Booker, Saagar Kotecha, Kamal Luke, Izat. Thank you so much for helping out. I'll see you guys in the next video.